confront that takeover and end this series. And with that observation, I end this section on fish paintings. The next artist who's really quite important and one we'll spend a bit of time on is Ma Hudger. Ma Hudger, active in the mid-12th century. Again, Julia Murray, the same person I spoke of earlier who uh, teaches at the University of Wisconsin, has a very good book on Ma Hudger. So I worked on him for years and published this good book called uh, Ma Hudger and the Book of, book of Odes. Uh, Cam uh, Cambridge University Press, 1993. Um, so I'm going to put uh, one of the pictures on and talk about it at, at some length about, uh, before I really come to talk about the pictures individually. Um, <clears throat> the Book of Odes, first of all, Shi Jing in Chinese, uh, is the oldest book of Chinese poetry, some 305 pieces in it, dating from the late Shang period, the 11th century BC, up to the late 7th century BC, when it was compiled, compiled around 600 BC. It used to be associated with Confucius, but anyway. Uh, there are various translations, a uh, very scholarly one by Bernard Carlgren, more literary translation of part of it by Arthur Whaley, and so on. Mahudger, the artist of these, was a native of Hangzhou. One source uh, from the early 13th century says that he had he attained the Jinchur degree, a kind of degree which uh, enabled you to attain high office in the government. Um, and uh, that he had this Jinchur degree in the mid-12th century and that he held some high official rank. And if that's true, then he wasn't properly an academy painter, but an official who also painted, perhaps largely as an avocation. Well, it's uncertain whether this is reliable. Um, uh, 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 Julia Murray doesn't really come out solidly on one side of the other, but leaves it open, which is all she can do, anybody can do. Uh, but if, if so, as I say, he could be called a, in a sense, a literati painter or a scholar amateur, although his works, as we'll see, are done with a very high technical finish. Anyway, the Emperor Gaozong admired his paintings very much and took part with him uh, in a joint project that is scrolls, hand scrolls, with texts of the poems of the Shi Jing, also called the Mausher because of an uh, early uh, annotations by someone named Mao, Mao, the Book of Odes anyway, written out by the emperor and then the illustrations painted by Mao Hudger. Uh, the emperor, uh, according to records, wrote out about 300 of the poems, leaving space for Mao Hudger to do the paintings. Uh, he died before he had finished all of them. Anyway, this was uh, again a political project, a part of the claim of legitimacy. Uh, is uh, okay, but anyway, political. So there are many scrolls of this kind purporting to be from the series that survive in various collections. But um, again, close copies were made, uh, and it's all but impossible to sort them out now. There's a lot of controversy. Among the strong contenders, I used to use a scroll in the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, quite fine, and one in the Fuji-e Yudenkan in Japan, in Kyoto. Um, and a scroll in the Palace Museum in Beijing, which we saw when we went there, is quite fine. I won't, as I say, try to distinguish them all or uh, argue which are originals and which are copies. Julia Murray assumes that they were all, in some sense, joint productions. She doesn't try to uh, say this is real and this is copy or whatever, uh, and avoids the question of the hand of the artist. Well, the plan of the paintings, first of all, is really quite old-fashioned. That is, text and pictures alternating in that sense, like the admonition scroll, attributed to Gu Kaijir, that is in the Liaoning version anyway. No, and then the, uh, I'm sorry, the British Museum painting, which you have text and pictures alternating. Um, deliberately old-fashioned in that way. The figure style, as we'll see when we get in closer, is described as light, light and fluttery. The brush line uh, used by Mahajir was said to be like willow tendrils or the leaves of orchids, that is, it thickens and thins in this kind of smooth, rhythmic way, so, uh, swelling and thinning brush line. Um, it's sometimes said that he, by critics, that he imitated Wu Daozi of the Tang Dynasty, but that probably means nothing more than that he used this kind of drawing with swelling and thinning uh, brush strokes. He has nothing of the force of Wu Daozi, anything, anything like that. It's rather a matter of delicacy here. 
uh, and one might say more than a shade precious. Uh, he's praised in the literati texts of the Yuan that otherwise do not praise court painting, so he's somehow separated from the regular academy masters uh, as an artist who stands apart from them and somehow above them. His brushwork certainly has the individualized look uh, of being by some particular artist without being personally expressive. It isn't like a personally expressive brushwork in literati painting. There's no gestures, there's no distortion of form for expressive purposes. So it's academic in the end. Now let's go ahead. Uh, yeah, here is, this is uh, the text and the star and the picture for one, I think this is probably the Beijing version. Anyway, um, this is the uh, Tianbao Jiuru. Tianbao is a, an auspicious poem and uh, it's always illustrated with a red sun and pine trees and mist and tall peaks. There are many paintings of this kind from later periods. Um, and uh, let's see, okay, here's two more. As I say, I'm not going to try to show where they are, where they are located. You can see here's one with geese flying uh, of, of, in a tr some of them perched in a tree and some in the air. And a uh, leafy tree and strange rocks down below. And here you can see this strange brush line, sort of strangely wavering uh, rhythmically of Mahajur. And here another one of a uh, leaves, no, rocks in the water and leafy trees and a man standing uh, down below. Well, you often, uh, um, there were often in, in these poems, you often find a person uh, standing or is mentioned. The poems often open, that is, with a, an evocative image that sets the mood of the poem. And Mahajar often, or almost always, illustrates this. And then the poem goes on to express human emotion, which is hard to, harder to depict. So um, uh, you see the person, presumably the person who is reciting the poem, or at any rate, the person who is having this experience that the poem illustrates, um, a kind of implied speaker. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, next please. Here's another one with uh, calligraphy and a painting. Now, about the calligraphy, um, the uh, emperor, Gaozong, um, admired late northern Sun calligraphy. He admired Mi Fu and Huang Tingjian, people like that, Su Dong Po. But in the end, he went back to the what's considered the orthodox tradition of the two Wangs, uh, Wang Xijie or Wang Xianzhi, uh, the mainstream tradition in China. And that's what these scrolls are. Uh, okay, uh, quite, quite neat and so on. But it, it, whether it was done, what, which of it was done by Gaozong and which by copyists or court artists, we have no way of knowing. Um, these scrolls, by the way, that I'm showing are all done on silk. Uh, they're also, Mahajir is also said to have worked on ink on paper, and there are examples in the Freer Gallery and the Metropolitan and elsewhere of Mahajir style paintings or paintings conceivably by him that are in ink, on, uh, ink on paper. Okay, here's uh, one on the, in the Boston Museum a court scene with lots of figures. This I know is in the Boston Museum because I remember it. And the emperor seated in the upper middle here, uh, surrounded by his ministers and by all the people paying homage. You can see very well this uh, kind of drawing done, used for the figure. Every stroke has a kind of thickening and thinning uh, orchid leaf-like character to it. Very formal. Um, Anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a very distinctive style, a, a poetic style, if you will, uh, literary, somehow fitting the literary and very distant uh, uh, sources of the poems. Uh, here are two, now at the, for the end, here's the Boston, from the Boston Museum painting, a passage which is almost completely foliage, a river running into the foreground and then the banks of it with bushes or trees. And all you really see is foliage. Quite remarkable, really. Another section, I think also from the Boston Scroll, in which two woodcutters are seen gazing up into the trees, perhaps hearing something. I should know what the text is that this illustrates, but I don't. What's remarkable about these paintings is the degree to which solid forms in them are dissolved into areas of loose brush strokes just on the edge of abstraction, 
but still reading as passages of uh, tree foliage and other scenery, with the nearer trees still separated in depth from the further ones at the right. A radical move into semi-dissolution of form that stops just short of going all the way. And then uh, another one here, uh, a detail from the scroll in the Yurinkan, Fuji'i Yurinkan, with, again, very loose painting, uh, a stream in the, in the foreground, and it's quite damaged, by the way, but uh, really quite a remarkable style for the time. Um, uh, the whole effect is obviously to dissolve the forms, to dissolve solid form into clouds of particles, leaves or moss, doesn't matter what. It's surprisingly visual treatment. Now, I've talked about visual treatments, things as they are seen rather than as we know them to be, as typical of Southern Sun Academy painting. And this is a sort of extreme point of that, that is, it relies on visual phenomena, perception, rather than reproducing, as I said before, what the artist knows is there uh, intellectually. Well, if you want to compare this with Impressionism or even Pointillism in the, you know, eight centuries later, is it, in the 19th century, go ahead and do. This is not, it's not untrue, it's not uh, obviously very different, but uh, it's a remarkable anyway for the 12th century. A number of smaller pictures in the style of Mahajur and attributed to him, album leaves and fan paintings, are also to be seen in various collections. I used to own one of them myself, a small fan-shaped painting now in our Berkeley Art Museum with three figures in Mahajur style, probably a fragment from a larger composition. More interesting than that uh, is the painting shown here, another fan-shaped leaf, this one in the Liaoning Museum, with two lines of poetry in the upper left inscribed on it by the early Yuan master Zhao Mengfu, who tells us that it's an evening scene in autumn. The scholar gentleman is seen on the edge of the water, sitting on a tiger skin, leaning on one hand, the other resting on his knee, as he gazes out over the lake or the river. His pot of wine and things to eat are in front of him. His attentive boy servant is standing beside him. The painting is spotted badly with purple mildew damage of a kind that can, cannot easily be washed out. But both the figures and the landscape display an early and fine version of the Mahajur manner. All right, now we go on to an important hand scroll uh, attributed to Mah Mahajur. In addition to the Mausher or Book of Ode scrolls ascribed to him, painted in ink and colors on silk, and accompanied by the text written in the imperial script, so that these purport to be the actual scrolls made by Mahajur and Emperor Gaozong working together. There are a few painted in ink only on paper. The scroll in the Fuji'i Yuninkan in Kyoto, which we just considered, is one of these. Another is a scroll in the old Freer Gallery collection, bought by Freer in 1919, representing the seventh month from the Odes of Bin agricultural poems from the Shurjing, the classic of poetry. It has no signature uh, or seals of the artist or the calligrapher, and is attributed to Mahajur in a call phone by the Ming artist Wen Zheng Ming, which I'll quote after showing the pictures. Each painting is about 11 and a half inches in height and 20 inches long. The passages of text illustrated are mounted on separate paper before each picture. One of the pairs, the second, doesn't match. And in general, it's clear that these are survivors from a larger series. There are, as I say, no signatures or seals of the artist or the calligrapher. <clears throat> Tom Lawton, in his Chinese figure painting book, discuss discusses the scroll at length and calls it Song Dynasty 13th century, which seems about right. He notes that the calligraphy of the texts of the odes doesn't match the writing of the Emperor Gaozong on the other scrolls. And he notes also that the drawing of the landscape setting and the architectural details is more skillfully done, while that of the figures is what he calls awkward and characterless. That may be a bit extreme. In fact, the figures are not drawn in the Mahajra manner at all, but in a Li Gong Lin-like Bai Miao uh, or plain line drawing.